When Santa Claus comes around your way, I hope that he will bring Nord's appliance for your home, and then you two will sing. You won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord. <laughs> Transcribed from Hollywood, Norge, a division of Borg Warner, manufacturers of America's most modern automatic and ringer washers, gas and electric ranges, water heaters, and home freezers. Originators and world's largest manufacturers of self defrosting refrigerators, Norge presents the Red Skelton Radio Show. Skelton, David Rose, and his orchestra, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGeehan, and Gene Cuter will be me, Rod O'Connor. And now the star of our program, the man with the station wagon physique and the convertible face, MGM's clown, Red Skelton. Characters in our show are fictional. Any similarity to persons living would be better off dead. <laughs> From the Skelton Scrapbook of Satire, a story entitled The Little Christmas Tree. Well, we'd better get into the theater and get things ready for our Christmas show. Hey, look who's coming down the street. Oh, yes, the star of our show, Junior. Yes, his mother sure like she's had her hands full, doesn't she? <laughs> yes. Well, I'll go in and get the costumes ready. Yeah, I'll go around and round up the actors. Now, hurry, Junior. You're don't the pull star. me like that. Now, wait a minute. You're the star of the Christmas pageant, and you don't want to be late. I don't want to be in it to begin with. <laughs> that stuff is sissy stuff. Why, playing with girls and stuff like that, if it ever gets back to the skunk patrol, I'll be demoted from a stinker to a sniff. <laughs> Really? You should be proud to be in the show. Well, I'm not. I'm scared. Well, what is there to be afraid of? The audience, that's why who's afraid of. <laughs> they sit out there with them big eyes staring at you. You never know if they've got apples or things they're going to throw at you or not, boy. Well, I changed my mind. I'm not going to be in the play. Oh, yes, you are, young no, man. I'm not. You, you let me tell you, I'm going to bang my head on the sidewalk. <laughs> You're wasting your time, Junior. We've been trying to pound something into your head for years. <laughs> You love me, don't you? Well, I'm telling you, you better stop acting like this. Well? If Santa hears about it, well, that's all. Well, maybe he won't come this year. Maybe he's still stuck in the chimney. I put a bear trap in there last year. <laughs> oh, I know. Hey, I know what Pop bought you for Christmas. Hmm? You know that big bottle of perfume? That $60 bottle? Yet? Oh, no, he shouldn't have. He didn't. <laughs> Door. Now, yeah. careful going up the steps. Okay. Hello, blubber boy. Oh, there you are. We've been waiting for you. Yeah. Do you know your lines, Junior? I know them frontwards and backwards. Good. But I'm so scared they'll probably come out sideways. <laughs> Good evening, Lorraine and Junior. Well, here's your Christmas tree costume. Do those oh. lights work? Uh, yes, they do. Oh, good. This is one Christmas I can get lit up before Pop does. <laughs> These uh, wires don't have any shorts in them, do they? I have shorts on. He wouldn't want Junior to get electrocuted. Oh, good heavens, no. He's wearing his good suit. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, shall we get dressed, Junior? Yeah, why does I have to be a Christmas tree? Why couldn't I be a widow angel? Oh, you dreamer, you. <laughs> there you are. Mm. Now, see how it fits? Yeah. Right over your head. Now, let's see, yeah. let's see how I look. Where's the mirror? Where's the mirror? Let me see, let me see. Hey, me, me legs are sticking out. Well, they're supposed to. They're supposed to be the tree trunk. Oh, it's the first time I ever saw a knock knee tree trunk. <laughs> now, Junior, you behave. Yeah. You're on right after Jean Cuter does her number, When the World Was Young. David Rose and the orchestra will play for her. They call me Coquette and Mademoiselle And I think I like it, yes, quite well it's something to be the darling of all, la grande femme fatale, the belle of the ball. There's no other place as gay as Paris. There's no other person I'd rather be. I love what I do and I love what I see. But where is the schoolgirl? That used to be
If any wives are listening, will you please cover your ears tightly now so you can't hear me. This is for husbands only. How about being a really generous Santa Claus this year? How about trading in your old refrigerator on a beautiful new Nord Jet self-defroster? There's a gift that will keep on giving year after year. For everything Nord makes, Nord makes right. It's a division of Borg Warner, you know. As for the features women want in refrigerators, this Nord has them. For instance... In a recent survey of 10,000 readers of McCall's magazine, women ranked in order the five features they wanted most. They were automatic defrosting, a fresh meat drawer, a full-width freezer, adjustable height shelves, and moist cold for fresh foods. The Nord's Jet Self Defroster has all five, plus other features women asked for, including room for a dozen quart bottles. It's still not too late to visit your Nord's dealer. And you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord. Hear ye, hear ye. It's time for a Christmas story. Our story begins in a forest where giant redwoods and tiny fir trees grow. This story is of a little Christmas tree who heard a voice. In the whispering wind. Each living thing is here to serve a purpose. Now you are growing in Mother Nature's storehouse. But soon man will come and take you away. Some will become houses, churches, furniture. But regardless of how you may be used, remember, it is my will that you serve well. And one day, two men did come into our peaceful little forest... And they rode in on horseback. They were all tired and dirty, they were. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, come on, Ork! Did I? Why don't you say stop? That's why I didn't say stop. Are you okay? Yeah, help me get my head out of this gopher hole, will you? You got a gopher. I'm in this hole over here. Say, why don't you get rid of that stupid horse? I can't. This is Silver's brother, old stainless steel. <laughs> you know, every year around this time, I get a, a feeling like I'd like to give something away, but I ain't got nothing to give. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go over to the bank and get some money and give you half of it. The bank is closed. I wasn't going to make out a withdrawal slip. <laughs> then I, why don't you reform and take home an honest man's pay? I will. You show me where he hides and I'll take it home. <laughs> One thing I'm honest about, that's fighting. Mm -hmm. Well, how about that horse thief I hear you fought? Uh, was that an honest duel? Well, sure. I even let him have the first shot. Mm -hmm. Then I stepped behind that big rock and plugged him. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, fella, but I'm reforming. There's too much stealing in the world. Yeah. You hear about that honest election they had in Russia? Five guys voted against him. Services were an hour later. <laughs> now look, Dad, I, Mother Nature's provided a way for us to earn our keep and not steal it. Are you going loco? No. I got that out of one of them television pictures. You going loco? 
Now get this now. It'll soon be Christmas. Yeah? Come on, let's chop down a lot of trees and go down and sell them to the city folks. Well, I don't know. Them things are awful big, ain't they? Well, we'll chop the little fir trees. Fir trees? Yeah. Well, a lot they won't think of next. Imagine going out in your backyard and picking a dozen of oranges and a couple of mink coats. <laughs> what do you say, did I? Well, um, see, that one up there looks pretty good. Way up there, sort of special-like, ain't it? Yeah. Say, uh, ain't we got enough trees, did I? Nope. There's one more up there. That little special tree, that's the one I want. Look, we've been climbing for that tree for three hours, and I'm mighty hungry. Well, what are you griping about? My hands are frozen. I've been holding my pants up with my teeth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that ain't easy. Why? <laughs> no teeth. <laughs> hey, forget about food. Uh, start thinking about women. Well, I'd rather think about food. Than women? Yeah. Boy, I hope I never get that hungry. <laughs> Hey, look, there's, where, there's that little tree up there. Let, let's go get it and we'll call it a day, huh? See, what's that black thing walking around under it? Bear. Looks like a bear. Well, make friends with him. You know, my brother made friends with a bear once. And the bear like him? Sure, he ate all of them. He must have. <laughs> I'll fix that bear. Give me that six shooter there. I'll put him no way to rest, boy. <laughs> All right, I'll lay down. Give me my gun back, Bear. <laughs> Boy, look at that bear run. Yeah. Boy, well, how you coming with that tree? Well, I'm working like a little beaver. Well, take bigger bites. <laughs> well, come on, let's go. We've got to sell these trees. And so along with a lot of other little trees, we were loaded on flat cars on the railroad, and we were taken into the city. There we all stood, looking at the tall buildings, so different from the tall mountains in the stillness. The people by the thousands were walking through this man-made force, arguing about me price. And the man who was selling the trees was pretty unhappy, he was. Well, here I am. Only wait so long if the music don't come, I go right ahead, you know. Yes, sir. America's foremost conductor. <laughs> yes, sir, here I am, old Clem Cadiddle Hopper, the Christmas tree man. They call me the Christmas tree man because my head goes to a point. <laughs> this ain't too good either, and I've got a feeling that after the 25th it's going to get worse. <laughs> Boy, business sure is bad. My head's freezing. Boo! <laughs> My ears must have come untied. <laughs> it's getting colder by the minute. I just saw Frosty the Snowman go inside to get warmed up. Yo-ho, well, Yo-ho! well, now, four hogs don't run in, I'll faint. <laughs> well, lover girl, how are you today? My face is frozen blue. Well, don't worry. It'll go back to its normal green again. Yeah, it is cold, ain't it, huh? My goose pimples are working in two shifts. Let's get over to the bonfire. There. You feel warmer? Nope. Well, maybe I should light the fire. Haven't you lit the fire? Well, no, I figured the logs would last longer this way. Now, here's a book of matches. A what? A book of matches. Have you read it? She didn't get that. She didn't get that. I didn't care for it myself. Oh, gee. Look at that handsome man in that Cadillac. How do you know he's handsome? He hadn't gotten out of the car yet. Any man in a Cadillac is handsome. <laughs> oh, that's Rod O'Connor. Howdy, howdy there. Would you like to buy a Christmas tree? Well, that depends. Uh, what do you have in a real cheap tree? Termites. <laughs> Yeah, what are you expecting, owls? 
Uh, what do you want to play? Well, uh, what have you got for about two dollars? Two dollars? Mm-hmm. There's a nice hairy broomstick over here. Like <laughs> no, no, no. I, I need a tree. Uh, sure. Let me look at something for two dollars. Well, it's a little high for a look, but if you can afford it, go ahead. <laughs> Now, uh, if you've got anything cheaper than two dollars, I'll take it. Uh, well, uh, uh, what do you have? I'll tell you, Sporty. Hmm? <laughs> Here's a package of seeds, but I don't think they'll sprout by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you sure got some scrawny stuff around here. That's my girl you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, say, she's really something. Yeah, I've heard that before, but what? <laughs> you pick out a tree, Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> I'm I get sickening about this. <laughs> hey, here's a brown tree over here I'll let you have for a dollar. A brown tree? Yeah. Well, I've never heard of that before. Is it something new? No, no, it's very old. Very old. <laughs> Here's one already decorated. How about that one? That's an orange tree. It is. <laughs> well, I thought those light bulbs were a little juicy. <laughs> hey, uh, mm-hmm. this is a nice little tree. How much? Oh, uh, um, this is ten dollars. Ten dollars. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. Now, if you need any more, just let me know. I'm open the year around, you know. <laughs> And so I was bought, and it was taken to a beautiful living room. And everybody seemed so happy, and there was Christmas music playing. Now let's hear that weekly homemaker hint from Jane Masters, co-director of the Norge Home Economics Department. During the holidays, you like breakfast to be special, but often you're too busy to fuss. Well, here's a time saver. When you make waffles, bake some extras and freeze them in the refrigerator. Then next day or next week, just heat them in the toaster. You'll have fresh hot waffles as quick as you could toast bread. Say, that's all right. And there's plenty of room for all kinds of frozen foods in the big crosstop freezer of the new Norge Jet Self Defroster. There's space everywhere, from top to floor and even in the door. Room for a dozen tall bottles, a meat drawer deep enough for a big roast. Movable shelves, including one with a lift-out section so you can store the holiday turkey without crowding. Extra shelves and a four-temperature butter bank in the handy door. And of course, you'll never have to think about defrosting again. For the Nord's Jet Self Defroster dissolves frost automatically every night. So fast, even ice cream stays frozen. Go take a look, for you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord. It's Christmas Eve, and we're making a last-minute check of our list to be sure we haven't forgotten anyone. We pause for a second and offer a prayer for our neighbors. 
We wish all of them a Merry Christmas. The children have hung up their stockings and have been shooed off to bed. In the stillness of the room stands a young fir tree, the tree of the Christ child. The stillness changes our thoughts. We hear the tiny tree speaking. So now I know what I am. I'm a Christmas tree. But a confused little Christmas tree because I don't know why I am here. Why was I chosen from millions of little trees just like me to stand in this room? And although I'm very young, in a few days I will wither away and my green coat will fade and my needles will drop off. Why am I standing here all decorated? What good are decorations if your deeds are not remembered? They hang decorations on heroes, too. Yet heroes like Christmas trees are forgotten, only to be remembered if they're needed to serve another purpose. Beneath my branches, gifts are placed. They're wrapped in gay colors and tied with bright ribbons. These are the tokens of friendship, the spirit of Christmas from those who gave from their heart. They gave for the goodness. Shall we stop in here to receive her speech? Oh, here's another package. Now, who's it from? From your boss. Oh, I wonder what it is. Maybe it's the thing. <laughs> I think with all his money, he'd give out with something worthwhile. Is this why I was brought here? Am I serving me purpose? Is this the true meaning and spirit of giving? Don't they know that Christmas is the birthday of Christ? Not a holiday for the greedy. Why am I standing here anyway? What is me purpose? What's that? There's somebody on the roof. It's reindeer. Oh, I remember the sound of their little hoofs. I remember how they used to play around me, branches out in the forest. Oh, somebody's coming down that chimney. Merry Christmas! Merry! Well, <laughs> they're all asleep. <laughs> well, I... I think I'll just rest for a second. Hmm. My, what a beautiful Christmas tree. Thank you. What? I said thank you. You said I was beautiful, and I said thank you. By golly, old Santa Claus's ears are playing tricks on him. I, I could have sworn that that tree spoke. I did, Santa Claus. But why in such a sad way? Christmas trees are supposed to be happy. Well, I can't be happy. I was told by a kind voice that I was to serve a purpose. Well, I can't figure out what it is. Well, haven't you ever been happy? Oh, yes. I was happy back in the forest. I remember how every spring the same birds who flew south for the winter would return and rebuild their homes that the blizzard had destroyed in my branches. And how the wind would blow through me fur and make whispering music. And the birds would join in and sing with us. We were the sounds of the earth. A symphony unwritten. I was happy then, because there at least I knew what my purpose was. Well, you're making music now? No, I'm not. Yes, doesn't it do you good to know that you're bringing happiness? <laughs> you just wait until Christmas morning when you hear the laughter of all the little children. And how proud you'll be when they dance around you. Oh, I wish I could be here to enjoy it with you. You see, I've never seen nor heard the children after I leave their presence. Well, why don't you stay around, Tanny Claude? Well, <laughs> for some reason I have never been asked. Ah. It seems that after folks get what they want, Santa Claus isn't needed until the next year when they need something else. Then why do you keep coming back, Tanny Claude? Because the children need someone to put the spirit of giving into their little hearts without greed. I come back each year hoping to find men living not by man-made laws, but by the Ten Commandments. So, be happy, little Christmas tree here. You do have a very wonderful purpose. How can I be happy? They've cut me off at the roots. 
I'll be dead in a few days without even knowing my purpose for being here. Well, maybe old Santa Claus can help you understand. You know, tonight I paid a visit to a place and knocked two of my reindeer cold. It was dark, you see. And we ran head on into an iron curtain. I should have known I wasn't wanted when I didn't see one Christmas tree to help light my way. There wasn't one child's stocking to be filled. Not one church holding services. And it was a great, vast place. All without spiritual guidance. You mean they don't have churches? Oh, yes. Yes, they have churches. And people are free to attend. But if they do, they can no longer be members of the party. And only members of the party receive ration cards. Oh, yes. Yes, there were churches. But they were not used for worship, little tree. They're used as museums to belittle the true spirit of giving. Now, do you understand your purpose for being here? As long as you and all other little trees like you can stand in a home at Christmas, the world will know that freedom of man is still here and that God's prayer, peace on earth, goodwill towards men, is still alive. Yes, Santa Claus, I do see it now. Oh, I feel so much better because now I understand my purpose for being here. Good. Well, I must be on my way. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, see. Santa Claus. For next year and every year. And maybe next year you'll be asked to stay longer than just over the holidays. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is Ron O'Connor saying, remember in refrigerators, home freezers, gas and electric ranges, washers and water heaters, everything Norge makes, Norge makes right. Take time out to stop in at your Norge dealers and see the new Norge Jet Self Defroster, the newest and finest refrigerator in the famous Norge line. Find out how smart it would be for you to trade in your old refrigerator on this beautiful new Norge. Think about what a wonderful Christmas present it would make for the whole family. A gift that would keep on giving year after year. Yes, see the new Norge Jet Self Defroster at your Norge dealers right away. And now until next week... This is Red Skelton saying thanks for listening and reminding you that you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Norge. Join us again next week for the Red Skelton Show. Red Skelton is heard in this program to the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor Studio. This is a copyrighted feature transcribed from Hollywood. This is the CBS Radio Network.